What's up everybody, I'm Spurkus. Welcome to the very first episode of Game Breaking News, the new show on this channel where I'm going to talk about everything important that happened over the last week in the world of gaming. And well, since this is the very first episode of Game Breaking News, well, we're going to talk about the very first two weeks of 2017. Um, well, I, I do know that I am a bit late and that I do have still quite a little bit to work around here. But um, yeah, I'm already having like really, really much fun to play around over here and, um, you know, learning my capabilities, but also limitations. And um, I'm pretty sure that we're going to have some really nice episodes in the future as well. But Game Breaking News is not about me. No, it's all about games. So let's see how 2017 started. And well, we have a lot to talk about because quite a lot happened for us gamers. And we're going to start with Mass Effect Andromeda. And it is good that we finally got some new information about Mass Effect Andromeda because, well, I was starting to get a bit worried, to be honest. The game was supposed to come out sometime in spring 2017, and so far we haven't really got, you know, that much information out of it. But finally, we did get some more information, mostly about the ship, that it is basically useless in combat, and um, that we don't going to have any space combat whatsoever. And, well, the new Mako, also known as the Nomad now, well, that looks actually quite good. But other than that, not really that much information, except that we finally know the release date for Mass Effect Andromeda, which is going to be the 21st of March in North America and the 23rd of March in the rest of the world. In addition, Aaron Flynn announced on Twitter that Mass Effect Andromeda won't have a season pass, which is quite interesting because, well, there will be paid DLC, yet... The question is, will they go more the CG Project Red approach, like in The Witcher 3, which you could see, you know, the gaming world to switch over to that behavior, you know, to give players more free DLC and also then give them a couple of paid DLC, which then are also actually worth the price and not just some gimmicky bullshit. Or if, you know, EA and Bioware is just so cocky that they say it doesn't matter what they do, they don't have to sell a season pass because the gamers are just going to buy the full price DLC. Anyways, well, we'll see. I hope, uh, you know, that they're going for the DLC approach like CD Projekt Red in Witcher 3. But, well, if we look at the pre-order bonuses that we have in Mass Effect Andromeda, well... I mean, if we look at the editions, we get at least the game every time. Now um, we get some stupid armor and some skins and um, a pet pie jack. I mean, what the fuck is a pet? Whatever. And also like multiplayer deluxe launch packs and booster packs, which are actually, for me personally, reasons for not to buy these deluxe and super deluxe editions. So what about you guys? Are you going to pre-order Mass Effect Andromeda or do you say, remember, no pre-orders? Or do you even say, no, Mass Effect Andromeda sucks, I'm not going to buy that. I'm really interested to know that. Speaking of sucking, so far almost every movie adaptation of a video game pretty much flopped or banged or was not really that good. And well now Assassin's Creed the movie has came out and so far it's not really doing great on the US market. Since its theatrical uh, release it has made over 50 million dollars in domestic box office but it was quite a success internationally. The problem is that according to various resources on the internet the movie must have a box office of about 400 million US dollars to be considered a commercial success and that maybe a sequel will come out in the future or not. So far it's not looking, well, let's say particularly bad because they at least have the production costs in, but it's not looking very good as well. But then again, you know, if the numbers stay that way as they are right now, there might be still some nice numbers waiting for Assassin's Creed. Well, speaking of nice numbers in a multi-million dollar project, Star Citizen has now a crowdfunding campaign of over 141 million freaking dollars. Are you fucking kidding me? Man, 
Of course, in celebration of that new number, they released more information about the game and some new videos. But seriously, when is it going to be released? I have not backed this game. Have have you have one of you guys backed Star Citizen? I would like to know how do you know feel? Is this game ever coming out or or do you think that this project is just way too big and too good to be true that this will actually never see the day of light or will it be just another no man's sky with a lot of promises but not really anything in the game i would like to know your thoughts on star citizen well speaking of too good to be true there is apparently a modder group named open 4 that tries to bring liberty city to gta 5 but it's not like they want to replace Los Santos with Liberty City. No, they want Liberty City in addition, you know, next to Los Santos on the map. So you can take a plane from Los Santos and fly over to Liberty City and then kill there all the people. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you cannot play the campaign over there. But even without this campaign, this would be really great. But still, I think this is a way too big of a project for a small modder team to accomplish. And this will either take years and years of development or, well, we'll actually not see the light of day. Even though I really, really hope that they do come through and manage to release this mod sometime in the future. And I would love to play it. So what about you guys? What do you think? Will this mod come out at some point? And would you like to play this? Or do you think that it's, well, yeah, it sounds like a nice concept, but... Yeah, it's doubtful that it will come out sometime in the future. Oh man, so far so many hopes here, but there are also a couple of doubts. Oh man, I think I'm going to need a little break. Um, see you in a second. Let's have a short break by looking at what the world has become in the year 2016. President-elect Trump just last night continued to dismiss both Moscow's involvement and the importance of the hacking at all. I think we ought to get on with our lives. I think that computers have complicated lives very greatly. Uh, the whole you know, age of computer has made it where nobody knows exactly what's going on. All right, I think with this little clip right here, we have a really good summary for how stupid 2016 was. For one, we have CNN doing really great journalism and putting Fallout 4 stock footage into their report. In addition, we have Mr. President-elect Trump saying that sentence. I mean, it's not the stupidest that he has said, but, ah, oh well, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate on that. We'll see in the future. But what really, really, really baffles me in this uh, video was, well, Don King, what the fuck is going on with Don King? What is wrong with him? I mean, is it, I, 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 oh, oh, or wait, is, is that is that Morgan Freeman's mother? Um well, really hard to say. Anyways, it's really weird. And the whole clip is basically quite a bit ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Speaking of ridiculous, Razer used the CES 2017 to present their project, Valerie. Um, well, that is a concept design of a laptop with three 4K monitors. All right. Let's think about that for quite a second. I mean, except for the fact that this is actually looking stupid as hell. Um I also think that powering three 4K monitors on a laptop is either going to cost a bigly amount of dollars or, well, it's not going to play that very well because there is just not enough space and room for enough hardware to power three 4K monitors. But, well, we will see. And I really, really doubt that this is going to be at some point affordable to a normal life form here on Earth. But thankfully, that was not the only hardware that was presented last week. No, there was also the Nintendo Switch event, where we had a much closer look at, well, Nintendo Switch. And damn, I have to say, it really looks nice. Also, Nintendo surprised pretty much everybody when they announced that Nintendo Switch is going to be released on the 3rd of March, which is very, very close by. And it will cost roughly about $300 in the US and 330 euros in Europe. Now, before some of you Europeans are starting to piss about the price policy, keep in mind that prices in the US are normally without taxes and prices in Europe are generally with taxes. So you are most likely better off. And honestly, I think that the price of $300 per console is actually quite a good price, especially considering that the concept of, well, this Switch feature, where you can just have this home device, which the Switch primarily is, this is a home console, but you can literally just take out the Switch, 
it immediately played as a handheld. That is something one of a kind and and you get like a big ass screen with sure only HD resolution, but still a decent hardware to run on a capable frame rate. Also, there are some new possibilities with the new controllers, but well, that is already basically it with the good news about the Switch because there are also quite a ton of problems and I think that Nintendo should address them before they release the Switch on the 3rd of March. Number one, the storage capacity of the Switch is 32 gigabytes which is basically nothing. I mean, sure, you can switch out the SD card that is in the console, but that just basically adds to the price tag. And the same goes for all the hardware that is also available for the Nintendo Switch. I mean, the Joy-Cons, which is the stupid name of the controllers, they cost together £75, apparently. Um, there's a Pro Controller that is costing like $60. And while on the other hand, you can have like a docking station where you can use the Joy-Cons also as a controller, I guess, which costs about $30. And, you know, all this stuff that just adds up. There's already so much costly accessories available for the Switch. I mean, comparing that price range to, well, let's say I already have a PlayStation 4 and then I have to decide if I get a PlayStation VR or a Nintendo Switch. I mean, you have to think about what's more worth it and what comes in mind then is, well, what kind of games we have available for each system? And that is also something that does not look good for Nintendo Switch. Because here we see a official picture from Nintendo. We have five, yes, five freaking games like 1-2 Switch and Just Dance 2017 for Nintendo Switch. I mean, that is not good, Nintendo. No, that is not good. And even if we look ahead the whole year 2017, there isn't really much to go on. I mean, sure, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, which is a already freaking old game, is coming out for Nintendo Switch. Yes, it is old, but sure, playing it you know, on the go would be great. Minecraft is coming out there as well. So will Street Fighter 2, Ultra, and Super Mario World Odyssey, which is probably going to be great, but, well, when will it come out? Sometime 2017, and maybe even then it might be postponed. So there aren't really that many games to start with the Switch, and for at least one year there won't be that many games, except for, well, Zelda... Elder Scrolls, hopefully, and the Mario game. That's it. That's like the big three in a whole year. So it's great that the console is coming out so early, but without any games, I don't know. Oh yeah, Zelda The Breath of the Wild is also available for Wii U. So spending 300 bucks on a new console just to get a slightly better performance on this game. Um, of course, if you have already the Wii U, uh, is that worth it? Mm, I don't know. And then there's also the issue with the online subscription. Because now, thank you, thank you very much Microsoft for that. Nintendo will also have you to pay for your online subscription. So if you want to play online, you have to pay a monthly fee. And for that, you can play NES and SNES video games for one month. Which, well, sounds great at first because, well, you get these old classics, you can play them again, and um, they're in the price. But the problem is, you can play them for a month with Xbox Gold or PlayStation Plus. You can, you know, keep these games while you're having the subscription. While on Nintendo, you have to pay monthly fee and then you can play these games for just a month. You know, for games that are decades old. These are decades old. The ones on Xbox and PlayStation, they are not that old. So my verdict for now after the presentation for the Switch is that... It looks promising, it has a attractive price, but it has a couple of issues which can be solved to some extent by Nintendo now, except for the games lineup, that is something that is, well, too late now. And that might be actually the biggest problem for the Nintendo Switch. But I wish Nintendo all the best with their Nintendo Switch. We need Nintendo. It doesn't matter if you are pro PlayStation or pro Xbox, or if you are, you know, a part of the PC Master Race. If Nintendo stays alive as software and also hardware developer, well, that is good for us gamers. So, guys, what do you think about the Nintendo Switch? What are your hopes, concerns, and dreams about these new consoles? Or do you not care anything about it because, well, you're not going to buy a Nintendo Switch anyways? Speaking of things that you're not going to buy, um, I can promise you that you will not buy Scalebound because this game was cancelled by Microsoft last week after four freaking years of development. 
Oh man, oh man, seriously. This was a multi-million dollar project and they canceled it. I mean, seriously, there must have been really, really, really big issues with the game that they had to make this decision. I mean, we have some information that the developers were so burned out of, you know, crunch times and working on the game all the time that they take a break for about a month. And then when they came back after a month of vacation, well, the deadlines were all so behind that they just gave up, basically. Um, An interesting development to be honest and i really ask myself how things like that can even happen don't they really care about money or what's wrong with these guys it's really hard to say what really happened we may find out in a couple of years but for now it doesn't really look that good for the lineup of the xbox one in 2017. the cancellation of scalebound really really hurt the lineup of the exclusive games for the xbox one now we mostly just have sequels and games like Halo Wars 2, which is a strategy game on consoles. I don't know if that's going to be such a success. I mean, sure, it's Halo. On the other hand, we have Sea of Thieves by Rage. So, yeah, that's actually quite a bit of a hope. State of Decay 2 is supposed to be coming out. I mean, State of Decay was really good, but it was really not that much of a triple A title. Let's see how they will turn the tide in State of Decay 2. But is that really enough for Xbox One to make a real comeback? Because we also have news from Sony that over the month of December, more than 3 million PlayStation 4s were sold, well, in December alone. So we have now over 53 million sold consoles. And while the numbers are not that clear at the moment, but it is really safe to say that for every Xbox One out there, there are about two, if not more, PlayStation 4s in the hands of the gamers. I mean, sure, Xbox One Scorpio is supposed to come out in the end of this year, and it's going to be the bestest console ever made. Well, that's what they claim at least. But at the moment, and that is the fact, the most capable console out there is the PlayStation Pro with the biggest lineup, the biggest support from game developers. And yeah, Microsoft, you have a problem with Scalebound. Again, they have a multi-million project just, you know, put in the sand and it's gone. Millions and millions of dollars gone. While on the other hand, Sony is just sitting over there and laughing their asses off and just chill out. Everything is going fine for them. They definitely made the right strategy choices this time. Even though I have to say that Microsoft is doing its best to turn around from that shit show that they displayed back when they announced at the E3 the Xbox One, which was literally Xbox Go Home. Let's have a short break by looking at the dark past of the Xbox One. TV experience. TV. TV and movies. TV. Watch TV. 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 Watch TV. 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 TV remote. TV experience. TV. 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 Sports TV. 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 Anybody? TV. 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 Sports. 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 Television. Television. TV. Television. Television, 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 TV, 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 sports, television, 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 Halo, television, Tele- TV, sports, 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 television, TV, 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 for Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, an entirely new Call of Duty for the next generation, Call of Duty, 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 Xbox, go home. All right, did we have any more news? Mm, um, well, I think there are now toddlers available for Sims 4. Oh, right. Nobody cares about that. Um, HDMI 2.0 was announced at CES 2017, which is good, but you need new hardware for that, apparently, so it's just not you know, new firmware. You need new stuff, new TV, new everything, um, which is bad. But it's technological advancement, so that is good for us gamers as well. Um, well, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a pleasure to talk about the first two weeks of 2016 and all the stuff that happened. I really enjoyed it and I hope you liked it too so that I will see you next weekend where we're going to talk about week three. See you then.